why online dating isn't working for you, there is a warning on this video because this includes a lot of statistical information that you are going to need to know if you want to succeed in online dating, especially if you are 28 or above. Again, shocking. If you don't want to hear these statistics that are not in your favor, then click off now. If you do, which I hope you do because you need to know this information so you can succeed at one of the most important areas of your life, which is being partnered, having love, real connection and a relationship that goes the distance that you can possibly be married. And if you want children. So who am I to talk about this? I'm coach Paula Grooms, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit? How a man decides to make you the one. These statistics that I am about to tell you are shocking, but when we know the real truth by the numbers, whether it's a financial decision or a relationship decision, you must know them to make sound decisions. And make no mistake about it, while you may be feeling, well, it's what I'm going to feel and I'm going to fall in love, yes, to some degree, but I urge you to listen to this entire video through to the end so that you get the real deal on dating by the numbers so that you have the best chance to bring about everything that you want in love. So what's going on societally that is prompting me to do this video? There is a disparity in dating according to women now becoming much more educated than their male peers. And I'm going to give you some statistics on that. Then I'm also going to tell you an issue about attempting to find love according to height and monetary resources. Women date vertically and up and men date vertically and down. And this is a serious problem when there is a disparity in women's education and also what women are looking for according to the numbers. So let's get to it. So let's look first at the educational piece because many women now more than ever are college educated and they are looking for that equality in a male and greater. And I'm going to give you the statistics on why it's an issue. So this comes from the New York Times in 2021. So things are pretty relevant and recent here. In many ways, the college gender imbalance is not new. Women have outnumbered men on campuses since the late 1970s. The ratio of female to male undergraduates increased much more from 1970 to 1980 than from 1980 to the present. And the numbers haven't changed much in recent decades. In 1992, 55% of college students were women. By 2019, the number had nudged up to 54.9%. Now you may think, well, that's not really that, that big of a gap. But when you look more closely, it is. As of spring 2021, women made up 59.5% of all US college students, which is a record high. U.S. Department of Education data further shows that more women are completing their degrees. 65% of women who matriculated at a U.S. four-year university in 2012 had graduated by 2018, compared with 59% of their male counterparts. Now, when you do the numbers of there are many more women enrolled in undergraduate programs than men, and then you add in the ones who graduate as opposed to the males who graduate, you have a very big disparity. So what does all this have to do with you and dating? Well, if you are looking across and up, you really need to be looking at some alternatives in terms of getting an equally educated man, because that education does not equate with intelligence and it does also not equate, especially in the male cohort, to income. For example, is a man, as long as he's 25 or above, 
can drive a truck for Walmart and make $110,000 a year and up. Well, you may say, well, I wouldn't be involved with a truck driver because I'm college educated and I want someone equally as educated as I. Well, I am encouraging you to look at things a little deeper here and I want to continue. Carrie points out that women have made up the majority of U.S. college students for more than four decades now. So this isn't just something that women are dealing with who are in their 20s. This is significant. 34% of CEOs are now female. Okay, you may say, well that's great and those women who are more educated and who have succeeded in their career lives will be able to find an equal partner. Okay, here's where the rubber meets the road on this and why it is shocking and I want you to be ready for it because here are the real statistics by numbers if you are looking for a man who makes 250,000 or above or 100,000 or above and you want him to be six feet tall or more, which many, many, many women by surveys do. Okay, ready for this. Men who are six feet and above and who make $250,000 a year or more in the United States, the percentage of that across the age spectrum. So from 18 to 85, here is the stat, 0.01% of men in the U.S. will be six feet tall or more and make $250,000 a year or more, 18 to 85. That is not sorting out for those who are married, those who are gay, those who are not interested in a relationship. I want you to think of yourself as an exceptional woman, but if you think of yourself as an exception to the rule, you will hurt yourself in dating and I'm going to urge you to take these statistics under advisement and start to look at the qualities of men that are truly important statistically in terms of longevity and happiness and fulfillment in a relationship. Height does not correlate to women's happiness in long-term relationships. Now you may say, well, that could be true, but money does. Well, I don't have the stats on men who are shorter than six feet tall. I can tell you, however, that the median height of men is 5'9". And that means that 50% of the population will be over that in terms of men and 50% will be under that. So again, we are looking at being realistic in prospects when we know that relationships and connection and partnership is at the heart of people being fulfilled in life and absolutely in love. So I want you to also think about this, the stat for men being six feet or more and making $100,000 a year or more. And that is, again, a lowly 3% of the population in the United States. And this is because the median height is 5'9". If you absolutely must have a tall man, then you may want to think about moving to the Netherlands, where men there are proportionately more six feet or above the second country. And there are only two. Netherlands and Montenegro. That's it. You see, we live in this world of social media and seeing influencers and, and people from certain pockets, especially in the States, such as Silicon Valley and New York City and Hollywood, a few others. But we need you as a woman so that you get what is really important in your life. And I'm not saying you need and must do this, but I want you to have the information. Knowledge is power. Very, very important for you to perhaps think about something that is happening in 
the European population, European women are getting more into hypogamy, where they are educated and they are dating across in terms of finances a bit and down because this is a statistic that you cannot do anything about. It is not you when you are having trouble online finding what you want in terms of status and height. It is simply a numbers thing and that is such a rare commodity that yes you're going to have issues. You are going to have that organically out in the world and I want you to succeed. It is not pleasant to bring these statistics forth and many people do not talk about it because people such as influencers and other folks online are selling dreams. I want you to succeed in love because it will be what makes you the most fulfilled in life. And I would bet if you are having trouble meeting someone and getting a relationship to go the distance, you believe it is you. And I'm telling you that there are some odds that are truly against you. So the Europeans, the women are looking at the sexy plumber, the really cute mechanic. You may bristle at that because you worked hard in your life to get an education and where you wanted to get to and you have a dream about a man being of equal or above status. Yes, you may, but I want you to put a tinge of reality in this when you are looking at men online. Every choice comes with giving up something else. Every choice does because there is no perfect partner. And now with these stats, you see why it's been hard for you. Again, dependent on where you live, you may have some better choices perhaps or options. Knowledge is power here. I want you to feel that power and to make choices that you may otherwise not have made. And how you can do this is when you are online and you are looking at a man's profile, I want you to think in a way that is going to help you to determine whether you should give a man a shot. A very simple way is to just say, if he were the last man on earth, would I give him any attention at all? Nine times out of 10, you're going to say, no, I wouldn't. Okay. But there are others where I encourage you, scale it. There's a 50% chance I would say, no dependent on his voice, his sense of humor, his intelligence. I just want you to look at it under a lens of that man may have characteristics. I know he has characteristics that are not going to come through in a profile and in a flat non 3D picture. They are not. And why in my one love program, I have in one of my steps, that you go back and forth with a man online and then you femininely bring him to a phone call so that you hear his voice and you see about the smarts and the humor and stuff like that, which is an essence that you cannot get from seeing a picture. But if you made it at the 50%, okay, he's a five on my scale of one to 10, but we know as another statistic that People who marry and they are with their partners for any amount of time, that looks does not play a part in them staying together. It does not play a part in their ultimate happiness. So putting so much stuff in it from online is going to do you a big disservice. I know that it does. Again, if you are looking under these two parameters that we talked about, financial means and height, we just want to expand your horizons by looking at a man's profile online, scaling him whether it's an absolute zero and a no, or at a five. And if, especially if you are wanting children and you are 28 or above, you definitely want to do this to increase your odds of getting true fulfillment in your life, which is having children 
and being partnered in that. So scale him and then move him through the steps. Seven simple steps to digital dating success is what my one love, online to never ending love, is all about. I encourage you to check it out. I will link it below. You can actually have a wonderful, fulfilling life when you deal with what is and not just in your head and you deal with the reality of you being an exceptional woman, but that you are going to hurt yourself if you think of yourself as an exception to the rule. So let's deal with a little more reality to get you your dream come true. I trust this was helpful today. If yes, a bit of a shocker, when we know and we've got the knowledge, we do better. I trust that awareness is going to help you comment below. Let me know your feelings about it. Get your feelings out about it. That's okay. Like this if it's helpful. Share it with other women who may need to hear this information and we will talk further and more about it in upcoming videos. So hit that red alert bell. Until next time.